Hello everyone, we are currently in High Hrothgar, waiting for all of the participants in the Peace Council to show up, and if you ask me, it's been taking them a little while. I mean, how long does it take to walk up a mountain, am I right? But anyway, as we are patiently waiting for them to get here, I thought I would recap a few grindy things that happened in between our last episode and our arrival here at High Hrothgar. While I was at the museum, I got my smithing skill up to 90 and leveled up, and I got a perk that now allows me to make dragon bone weapons and armor. I also crafted some more artifacts for the dining hall, which leveled up my archaeology skill, and so I grabbed a perk that allows me to locate the closest relic, and I'm really excited about getting to use that power as we continue on our adventure. After I was done with all that, I was accosted by a dragon like the second I stepped outside, so I made short work of that dragon and impressed the locals with my ability to swallow dragon souls. After that, I decided to make a trip to Kolskager Mine for some gold, and while I was fighting some Forsworn, I ran into one of the Restoration Spirit Tutors that I unlocked through a past perk in the Restoration Skill Tree, and his blessing makes my Restoration spells 1% stronger for every 20 points of magicka I have. So my Restoration skills are about to get ridiculously strong. Then I went back to Embershard Mine to test out my archery skills, and unfortunately for several of the bandits there, my aim is getting much better. Back at the museum, I made a replica of the Dragon Stone from Bleak Falls Barrow, and after I had hung up that replica, Orion gifted me with a fancy staff that summons a ghost who isn't very talkative. In all seriousness, that staff design is probably my favorite that I've seen so far. But anyway, now that all that grindy stuff has been covered, I think it's time to see if our willing Peace Council participants have arrived. Oh, hey, guys. So, Arn Gear, is it? You know why we're here. Are you going to let us in or not? You are not invited here. You are not welcome here. We have as much right to be at this council as all of you. More, actually, since we were the ones that put the Dragonborn on this path. Were you? The hubris of the Blades truly knows no bounds. If it were up to you, the Dragonborn would sit dreaming on this mountain, doing nothing. Delphi, we're not here to rehearse your grudges. The matter at hand is urgent. Aldwin must be stopped. You wouldn't have called this council if you didn't agree. We know a great deal about the situation and the threat that Aldwin poses to us all. You need us here if you want this council to succeed. Uh... Very well. You may enter. So, you've done it. The men of violence are gathered here, in these halls whose very stones are dedicated to peace. I should not have agreed to host this council. The Greybeards have no business involving ourselves in such matters. Well, there's also a woman here. Too, just to be clear, Arngear, they aren't all just men of violence. But, uh, this was the only way to get Balgriff's help. Yes, yes. Which is why I allowed this violation of all our traditions. But regrets are pointless. Here we are. Take your seat at the council table, and let us see what wisdom we can find among these warriors of Skyrim. We all wait upon you, Dragonborn. Sounds like a plan. Let's head in there and negotiate some peace. You know, some people call me the uh, the master Take your of peace. Seat and we can begin. Oh my gosh, Arn Gear, I'm I'm getting there. You hold your horses. I mean, what? Do you have somewhere else you have to be? We all wait upon you, Dragonborn. Oh my gosh, you are so impatient. For somebody who talks about being peaceful, you are exceptionally impatient. Okay, hold on. Inigo. Are you ready for negotiations? 
I am honored to be present at such a historic occasion. Well, that's great, Inigo. You also might have to watch from out here, so... I will miss you. I will miss you too, buddy. Lucian, my friend. Everything all right? I just need you to wait here for a second. Sir, yes, sir. While I wait for I'll Arngear right here. to shut up. Arngear, my dude. Why delay? Please, take your oh seat gosh. so that we can begin. Why isn't anyone else sitting down? Waiting, uh, waiting, waiting. <laughs> I do not why am I the most important person here? Now that everyone is here, please take your seats so we can begin. All right. I hope that we have all come no. here in the spirit you of- insult us by bringing her to this negotiation? Your chief Talos hunter? That didn't take long. Diplomatic. Here, here. I have every right to be at this negotiation. I need to ensure that nothing is agreed to here that violates the terms of the White Gold Concordat. She's part of the Imperial delegation. You can't dictate who I bring to this council. Please, if we have to negotiate the terms of the negotiation, we will never get anywhere. Perhaps this would be a good time to get the Dragonborn's input on this matter. By Izmir's beard, the nerve of those Imperial bastards, eh? To think that I would sit down at the same table with that. Thou more bitch, either she walks or I do. Wow, Ulfric. That was kind of mean. I mean, she is kind of terrible. But hey, what's the harm? Besides, I don't think Tullius really wants her here either. Maybe so, but bringing her here is a deliberate provocation. Tullius needs to know I won't be pushed around. Okay, why are you talking to me like we're friends? I think we've met one time. Look, Ulfric, just, uh... Let Tullius have his way on this. He'll have to give some ground later. I mean, I don't really care which one of you wins or loses. So, I will, uh, I will save this for now. <laughs> hmm. It feels like a mistake to me. But I'll bow to your judgment on this. That's right, Ulfric. But bow to me. To Nothing more. We are not negotiating with her. Is that clear? Ulfric, why so hostile? After all, it's not the Thalmor that's burning your farms and killing your sons. She's supposed to be on our side? You know exactly... No. Not this time. Now that that's settled, may we proceed? I have something to say first. Here we go. The only reason I agreed to attend this council was to deal with the Dragon Menace. There's nothing else to talk about. Unless the Empire is finally ready to renounce its unjust claim to rule over the free people of Skyrim. I knew he wouldn't We're be able to We're here to resist. arrange a temporary truce to allow the Dragonborn here to deal with the dragons, nothing more. I consider even talking to the Empire a generous gesture. Are you done? Did you just come here to make speeches, or can we get down to business? <laughs> yes, let's get this over with. Are we ready to proceed? Oh, boy. Jarl Ulfric, General Tullius, this council is unprecedented. We are gathered here at the Dragonborn's request. I ask that you all respect the spirit of High Hrothgar and do your best to begin the process of achieving a lasting peace in Skyrim. Who would like to open the negotiations? Yes, let's get down to it. We want control of Markarth. That's our price for agreeing to a truce. So that's why you're here, Ulfric? You dare to insult the Greybeards by using this council to advance your own position? Jarl Elisif. General, I'll this is outrageous. This. You can't be taking this demand seriously. I thought we were here to discuss a truce. Elisif, I said I'd handle it. Ulfric, you can't seriously expect us to give up Markarth at the negotiating table. You hope to gain in council what you've been unable to take in battle, is that it? <laughs> I'm sure Jarl Ulfric does not expect something for nothing. Solid trash talk, yes, Tolius. that'd be entirely What would the Empire character. want in return? Wait, General, you don't intend to just hand over Markarth to that traitor? This is how the Empire repays us for our loyalty? Enough. First, let's be clear. 
This council wasn't my idea. I think it's a waste of time. Hey. You are a traitor to the Empire and deserve a traitor's death. But I at least will negotiate in good faith. Since we're all here at your request, I'd like to hear what you think Markarth is worth. Hmm. I think Dawnstar seems like a fair trade. In exchange for Markarth, the source of most of Skyrim silver. Hardly. Riften seems like a better choice to me. Well fortified, easily resupplied from across Lake Honrik. Plus all the mead we can drink. There are advantages to gaining Dawnstar, General. Not enough to outweigh the loss of Markarth. With the reach in enemy hands, our whole position in solitude would be threatened. Look, man, you asked my opinion, and I gave it to you. Fair enough. I was hoping you could put aside your loyalties for the greater good, but I see you're firmly in Ulfric's camp. What? Still, Hold on. Having another port would ease our supply situation considerably. Better than nothing, I suppose. But Ulfric will need to offer a lot more if he wants me to give up Markarth without a fight. The Dragonborn has spoken, Talius. Markarth will be ours. Now we'll see if there's anything behind your talk of good faith. I don't blame you, Dragonborn. You made the best of a bad situation. But I can see now that this is not a negotiation at all. I know you, Ulfric. If I hand over Markarth, you'll be ready with a new demand. You'll never defeat the Empire, and you know it. But you're willing to sacrifice thousands for your own selfish ambition. Soon enough, I'll have you back under the Headsman's Axe, and this time there won't be any dragon to save you. As always, the Empire's fine words are worth nothing. Stop! Are you so blind to our danger that you can't see past your pity disagreements? Here you sit arguing about nothing, while the fate of the land hangs in the balance. Is he with you, Delphine? If so, I advise you to tell him to watch his tongue. He is with me. And I advise you both to listen to what he has to say before you do anything rash. Don't you understand the danger? Don't you understand what the return of the dragons means? Alduin has returned, the World Eater. Even now he devours the souls of your fallen comrades. He grows more powerful with every soldier slain in your pointless war. Can you not put aside your hatred for even one moment in the face of this mortal danger? Yeah. A very pretty speech. You tell him, Esber. But Esburn. what does it have to do with a... I don't know about the end of the world, but this dragon situation has gotten out of hand. If this truce will help the Dragonborn here put an end to that menace, we both gain. Remember that, Ulfric. Now, back to the matter at hand. You know as well as I do that we can't hand over Markarth on these terms. Shores, bones, where will these demands end? Out with it, then. We want compensation for the massacre at Carthwaston. You slaughtered the very people you claim to be fighting for. True sons of Skyrim would never do such things. Damned Imperial lies. My men would never stoop to such methods, even in retaliation. This is our homeland, Tolius. All the blood spilled in this war is on your head. You've been even-handed so far. What do you say to our demand? Hmm. I think Ulfric should compensate you for Carthwaston. Well said. <laughs> for once you'll actually pay for your crimes. I suppose that's the fairest deal we're likely to get. It seems we may have an agreement. Jarl Ulfric, General Tullius, these are the terms currently on the table. Markarth will be handed over to Ulfric's forces, Jarl Igmund will step down, and Thangvor Silverblood will become the Jarl of Markarth. Ulfric will allow Imperial forces into the Pale, Skald the Elder will go into exile, and Brynna Merilis will assume the Jarlship. The Stormcloaks will pay appropriate compensation for the massacre at Carthwaston. 
You both agree to this? I shouldn't agree to terms that so blatantly favor the Empire. I have no choice, though, under the circumstances. But once Aldwin is defeated, then it will be the Empire's turn. Remember Evgir Unslag. You should be pleased, Elisif. You've done well for yourself as the Empire's pet yard. But beware, the Empire's loyalty is fickle. They will tire of this war, and then I will be the one dictating terms to you. I have nothing to say to that murderer. General, you've proven yourself a good friend to Skyrim. I continue to trust that you will do your utmost to safeguard our interests. Thank you, Jarl Elisif. I appreciate your loyalty. The Empire can live with these terms, yes, for a temporary truce, until the Dragon Menace is dealt with. After that, Ulfric, there will be a reckoning. Count on it. Come on, Galmar. We have a lot of work to do. Giving up Markarth is a heavy price for this truce, Dragonborn. I hope it was worth it. Jarl Balgruf, I assume you are familiar with the Dragonborn's plan? Yes, I'm ready to do my part. Just say the word, and my men will help you spring this trap. But the difficulty remains how to lure a dragon to Dragon's Reach at all. Well, that's an excellent question. You haven't overlooked that little detail, have you? Ah, I believe I can be of help here. I anticipated the problem. While you were arranging this meeting, I was busy in the library of Skyhaven Them, an unguessed trove of lost lore. But the important thing is that the Blades recorded many of the names of dragons they slew. Cross-referencing this with Delphine's map of dragon burial sites, I believe I've identified one of the dragons that Alduin has raised up. And how does that help us? Uh, don't you see? The names of dragons are always three words of power. Shouts. By calling the dragon with a voice, he will hear you wherever he might be. Why would he come when called? He's not compelled to, but dragons are prideful by nature and loath to refuse a challenge. Your voice in particular is likely to intrigue this dragon. After your victory over Aldrin, I think it's very likely that he will be unable to resist investigating your call. So what's this dragon's name? Ah, indeed. I'm no master of the voice, like these worthy gentlemen. But it is written here, in this scroll. Oda Vin, winged snow hunter, as I read it. Nope. <laughs> That was quite a quite a coordinated stand-up that you guys did. Oh my gosh. Okay. So you're just gonna talk to me behind my back. Okay. You probably shouldn't lie. Yep, it turns out he's a dragon. But he helped me. That's fine. We needed his help. Now we don't. And it's long past time for him to pay for his crimes. And he's not just any dragon. He was the right hand of Alduin. He committed atrocities so infamous they are still remembered thousands of years later. He needs to die. He deserves to die. And it falls to you to kill him. Until he's dead. Well, I'm sorry, but we would dishonor our oaths as blades if we continue to help you. Delphine, about Parthenax. Make your choice, Dragonborn. You're either with us or against us. Why does he need to die? Here's the big picture. He helped Alduin enslave our ancestors. He may have betrayed Alduin in the end, but that makes him worse, not better. We can't afford to give Parthenax the opportunity to betray us in turn and return to his old master. Ah, oh, Delphine... Why would you do that? Why would you force me to make that choice? And just to be clear, there's no choice to make. I'm not killing Parthenax. I can't kill him. He helped me. And he could actually be of further use in the future. Inigo, wait there. Inigo, do this. Inigo, kill that. Inigo, wait some more. 
more. Sometimes I wish I was not so agreeable. Oh, Inigo, you guys just hang out here for a second, okay? Inigo, stop your whining. I need to go find Arngear. I wanted to chat with him. Hey, buddy? I fear this truce will not last. You gave the Empire too much. Ulfric will not let that stand for long. Yeah, you just let me worry about that. We have another problem. The Blades want me to kill Parthenax. Now you see why I've warned you against them. Bloodthirsty barbarians! Is it true what they said? Was he Alduin's right-hand man? Yes. But understand, during the days of Alduin's rule, all dragons were his allies. There was nothing else they could be. If not for Parthenax, Alduin could not have been overthrown. It was he that first taught men to use the Thum. <sighs> well, don't worry. I'm not going to kill Parthenax. Kinnerith has placed the voice of wisdom within you, Dragonborn. All you need do is learn to listen to it, and your path will be clear. Okay. Sky above, voice within. It's funny that it kept giving me all those dialogue options to tell him. The Blades told me that Parthenax was Alduin's ally, but I'm pretty sure we already knew that. Like, I think that was... I think... Parthenax himself said that when we first met him, uh, that he he betrayed Alduin. But anyway, uh, let's go. Wow. Oh. Just wow. <laughs> you actually managed to convince them to stop. Thou art truly amazing, O oh Dragonborn. Pity it won't last. Rabbit dogs will be rabbit dogs after all. <laughs> right then. You and I have a dragon to catch, do we not? Oh, wait, are you talking about Parthenax? That's what this is about. I'm... I'm not going to kill Parthenax, Lucian. I should hope not! He stood by us for all of this. He fought with us against Alduin. The Blades will just have to deal with that. Totally agree. I'll be right here. Oh, wait, I forgot to get you to follow me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Good to see you. Follow me. <laughs> Lead the way. Sorry, some of the dialogue there seemed to trigger out of order. Hello, Lou Inigo. Truce accomplished. Well played, my friend. Now, let us go trap a dragon. Yes, let's go do it. Any thoughts? Who made the gods, I wonder? No one ever told me a satisfactory answer. <laughs> All right, follow me. Yes, let us go. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with Lucian. I agree with... Arngear. I mean, of course, Arngear would be opposed to killing Parthenax, but I, I've i never liked that choice anyway, because it kind of paints Delphine and Esbern in a in a bad light. They they seem so bent on revenge that they are willing to, or sorry, maybe not willing, that they are completely unwilling to believe Parthenax could have been reformed they're they're not allowing any sort of redemption for him and in in my experience or in the player character's experience uh parthenax has only shown that he is truly remorseful for the acts he committed with alduin and trying to trap a live dragon in the jarl's palace madness Glorious madness, yes, but madness nonetheless. Totally agree, Lucian. Sorry, I was going to finish my thought that uh, Parthenax seems very committed to helping you stop Alduin. I mean, and Lucian even said it a minute ago. He literally fought uh, fought with us against Alduin at the throat of the world. So, I don't know. I don't know what else Delphine and Esbern want. Um, but anyway... It's not an accident, fellas, that we are headed here into the Bannered Mare, the finest inn and um, tavern in White Run. For we are here. Yes, my friend. To hang out for a little while. Whistle if you need me, okay? Sure will. Something on your mind? Right, you are, boss. We're gonna stay here for a drink, right. guys. We can have a seat. Or hey, well. 
wonder if I can get Inigo to sit down over here. So, Ready? uh, I need you to do something. What would you have me do? What have you? How can I help you, my friend? Have you sit there? Good idea. That's a good idea. Ticky break legs. You have earned it. Totally agree. I thought we could take a minute, Inigo. I and... would make a good bartender, I think. Doesn't look like there's much to it. Yeah, I thought we could take a minute. It's gonna be a pretty crazy, pretty crazy ride capturing yep, a dragon. So I thought we'd. Uh... Any smell? They should bottle the stuff and throw it in the sea. <laughs> yeah, I thought we would. Uh, we would take a little break, let the the boys up at Dragon's Reach uh, have a little more time to get the dragon trap ready, and uh, yeah, we can have a drink and and chat for a little what while. What is on your mind? Let's see. Inigo, mind if I ask you something? Ask away. Since we've got some time. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I realize that since I found you in that prison cell and we've been through several battles together, we haven't really gotten a chance to sit down and talk about you and about your past. Some folks seem to have a magical, never-ending supply of arrows. I have no such enchantments working on me, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Fire away. Let's talk about something else. I was hoping you could tell me a little bit more about your past. My brother and I never knew our real parents. We were found abandoned in a smelly shack by a soldier on his way to battle. We melted his heart with our fuzzy little faces, and he carried us to the nearest town. He deposited us at an orphanage, and that is where we spent most of our childhood. Really? What happened after that? My brother and I were adopted by a couple of retired assassins. I guess the orphanage did not do a family background check. <laughs> It sounds like you had a very interesting childhood. Mine was perhaps a little more unconventional than most, but I suppose all childhoods are interesting to some degree. Fair point. My parents provided me with love and encouragement. Apart from the nightly training sessions, we were a normal family. Well, was there anything else from your past? I was bullied by the other Khajiit children because of my unusual color and markings. My mother showed me a handy trick with a rock and a glove. I was never bothered again. <laughs> Inigo, I gotta be honest, that's a bit extreme. You could have seriously hurt someone. Childhood is extreme. It is a time of hard learning, but also teaching. Anyway, I never seriously hurt anyone until I was a lot older. Hmm. Fair enough. So, what else is there to know about you? My father showed my brother and I how to use a sword. My mother taught us the bow. Happy childhood memories. <laughs> Definitely sounds like it. Anything else? I grew up in Riverhold, not far from Cyrodiil. My brother and I headed for the Imperial City to find our fortune when we came of age. I found love, for a time at least. My brother found death. Oh. Your brother found death? I will come to that soon. There is a little more to hear first. And what about the love that you found? Well, now that I think about it, maybe it was not love. It was brief and, as it turned out, one-sided. Anyway, all that happened later. Okay. Well, tell me a little bit more about your past. My mother and father are both gone. They died protecting a trading caravan a few years back. I guess I am an orphan again. Aww. I'm sorry for your loss, Inigo. That means a great deal. Thank you. Of course. What were your parents like? I suppose they were a bit of an odd couple, being an Argonian and a Khajiit, but they adored each other. And us. <laughs> Despite their previous profession, they were good people. Anything else you want to tell me about your past? 
My brother and I found much work as sellswords. We never made it to the Imperial City, but we made a lot of coin. And what kind of jobs did you do? A bit of giant killing here, a bit of witch slaying there. We took gold when it was offered, but sometimes we worked for nothing. It is hard to deny those in need whether they have coin or not. We made more than enough from those who could pay anyway. Excuse me. And where did all your travels take you? All over Cyrodiil, from the Gold Coast to the Gerald Mountains. It is a wonderful land, but quite tame compared to Skyrim. Those were happy times, traveling or working during the day, camping out under the stars at night. Life was good. I actually wanted to ask you something else I just remembered. Fire away. I noticed that there was a, uh, let's see. Hmm. Yes, my friend. The loot in your cell, when we first met, was full of arrows. I take it you prefer singing? Yes. I have never been very good, though. I enjoy writing songs, but sometimes it is more fun just making up words as I go along. <laughs> Improvisation keeps the mind sharp and boredom at bay. <laughs> well, feel free to sing something while we're traveling. If I asked, would you do so? Maybe, but nothing too serious. I would rather save my proper songs for the Bard's College. For now, anyway. Why is that? Well, I know it is silly, but my songs are special to me. I would rather perform them in a special place. However, if you just want me to improvise something while we are traveling, maybe I can help you out. We will see. Sounds good, man. Let's let's uh, let's pause the conversation for now. Let's go get some more drinks. The night is young, Lucian. You doing all right? <laughs> <laughs>